Hello fellow psychonauts, it's me, Dolo. This week I want to examine the themes and archetypes of Salvia Divinorum. Salvia archetypes are specific hallucinations that are commonly shared by users of the psychedelic substance Salvinorin A, better known as Salvia. Salvia users report visions of elves, zippers, and circuses, among many other seemingly random things. This phenomenon was noticed and discussed on Salvia forums beginning as early as the 1990s, although I found there were no efforts to list or investigate these archetypes. So three years ago I made this video and yeah, it's uh, yeah, due for an update. So what I'm going to do is briefly lay out the current Salvia science before listing all the major Salvia archetypes, and then wrap it all up by giving you my developing theory on all this. Salvia divinorum is a mint plant in the sage family, originating in the cloud forests of the Sierra Mazateca, and traditionally used by the Mazatec people. The leaves of this plant contain salvinorin A, a potent psychoactive chemical when absorbed in the salivary glands by chewing the leaves, or through the lungs by smoking a salvia extract. Each method of ingesting salvia affects the quality or presentation of the trip, which can alter the archetypes to some degree. Salvinorin A is a highly selective kappa opioid agonist, meaning it primarily interacts with the KO receptor system in the human brain. In contrast, what is often referred to as the classic psychedelics, such as mushrooms, ayahuasca, and peyote, tend to interact with various receptor systems, primarily the serotonin system. I believe this regional difference in brain activity is a major cause of why salvia archetypes are atypical to other psychs. They're completely separate systems. That being said, some archetypes are common in all sorts of hallucinatory experiences, like the circus. While archetypes such as the zipper are highly specific to Salvia. But why is that? Out of pure curiosity and boredom, and maybe some passion too, I don't know. I suggested in a video entitled Toward a Science of Salvia Archetypes that I could envision an initiative to gather evidence to research this whole thing, and a viewer started a discord earlier this year for us to create distinct groupings and organize the archetypal phenomenon of salvia. We came up with some ideas. The plan would be to use web scrapers to extract data, in this case keywords, from salvia trip reports found on websites such as Arrowhead and Blue Light. In addition, volunteers would manually Google keywords and search through various drug forums, comment sections, and literature for relevant info. Also, an email address would be created and facilitated for users to directly send their reports. All of this information would be stored and categorized on a dedicated website. Though we don't have one set up yet, the plan is to use an open source Google document for now. So I've been listing the most common archetypes I could think of in this document, and I organized them into categories that contain sub-themes that act as keywords. For example, the wheel archetype is composed of many elements, like pages, spinning, etc. There can also be multiple keywords for one archetype, and I tried my best to include similar terms. So now we'll go through this list, and I'll say a thing or two about my interpretations of the potential symbolic meanings behind each archetype. Right here, right now. Take my hand. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so let's go through this list together. I'm gonna to lay out every single salvia archetype, and if I miss any, please let me know. Okay, so the first category is little beings or little entities. This includes elves, sprites, gnomes, fairies, dancing, chanting creatures, aliens, or some type of cartoon life form. These little beings were referred to as fractal adumbrations of the self by Terence McKenna. So basically the idea is that it's your ego or alter ego, but fractured into many little elements. These creatures act as workers. They often create the hallucinatory landscape. In terms of their symbolism, it's just, it's so varied. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Next category is arguably the ultimate archetype of 
of Salvia Divinorum because it's even in its traditional name, Scapastora, and that is the shepherdess. So this presents as a feminine voice, a feminine presence. Usually it signifies like a guardian or a teacher, and it's a very maternal mother-like figure. It can bear a lot of resemblance to the Christian Mother Mary, also kind of a mother goose character, and the tendency is to be hurting potentially the little beings that I just talked about. I go over the shepherdess in much more detail in my video I did a few months ago, but it, it is very likely that Salvia, for whatever reason, induces a feminine-like maternal presence. And this goes into the next category, which is follow the leader, for lack of better terms. Leader followership, it can present as the shepherdess herding little beings, or it can be more vague in terms of parades and processions. And it can also encompass marching, dancing, and chanting. And if not the shepherdess, there's usually some type of orchestrator or band leader. The next category is actually a gigantic one, and this is one that's very common for all psychedelics, and that's the archetype of the trickster. And this presents as either jesters, clowns, or joker type characters. These archetypes I feel are just so baked into human psychology. I, I was told this theory a long time ago that humans developed humor as a, a survival coping mechanism to deal with tragedy or otherwise uncomfortable situations. It basically helped deter humans from killing each other. I don't know if that's true, but I do believe that humor does have a strong function in human survival and functioning. These archetypes were found in many, many different cultures and different forms, and their role was usually to not only bring humor to the culture, but also a degree of self-reflection and criticism. Whereas if you were to criticize the culture without humor, people might be more likely to be offended by it. So it's kind of a wedge in for self-reflection. The next category is blasting off. This can present as blasting out of a Cannon. It could be a zooming train, a roller coaster, maybe just flying. Usually when it's a blasting off type experience, this typically happens during the onset of the smoked salvia experience and the extract. And I think it's an expression of the intensity of the onset. Although I have heard variations where people were falling back into the body at the end of a trip. So it can also signify the reverse of coming down. Usually if people were to choose salvia, it would be more of a floating experience because again, it's more gentle chewing salvia leaves than smoking salvia extracts. So I, I do think there's a direct correlation there. This next category is also a really mega one for salvia divinorum. And again, it is highly specific to salvia divinorum. It's very rarely experienced on other substances, although there are some reports. And that is the wheel. I did a whole video on this one too a couple years ago, so you could watch that. But the wheel is very much similar to samsara and Buddhism or at least there's strong correlations there. And it's basically the lifetime of all human experience. And it kind of acts as like a movie reel, to be honest. Every moment of your life are these pictures in these frames and there's like a rapid succession of them. So we experience time as a steady flowing state whereas it's actually single frames, an inconceivable amount of single frames per second. And these frames make up the wheel and the spinning of this wheel creates time. Although I don't really believe that this is actually how reality and time works, but rather how our brains interpret reality. But either way, it's super interesting. I really want to see more research into this archetype specifically because of its implications to the human brain and how we relate to the world. The pages can be referred to as tiles, plates, frames, and those would be flipping, turning, spinning, rotating. It can be described as a shutter-like effect. People describe moments frozen in time as in like one single frame. Seeing your life timeline, the experience of being flattened and compressed also lends to this whole experience. Again, I explained it in this video. Also, if you describe flashing memories 
or feeling like you're animated. This next category is also highly specific to Salvia and that is the archetype of zipping. These zippers usually represent the threshold between two different worlds. So the experience would be you'd see a wormhole open up and instead of it just opening up, you see a zipper. I don't really know why zippers would be there, but people experience zipping, seeing zipper tags. Sometimes they see human heads as the zipper tag. Sometimes it's just auditory. It's very, it's, it's weird. <laughs> Steamrolling is another category. The experience of reality being rolled up or you're being squished or something like that. This can present as either a steamroller or rolled up like a carpet. This again implies that reality is a fabric. The zipper is kind of a pun on that. I didn't say this yet, but a lot of these categories are very intertwined, so they're not very clear cut. <laughs> Turning into objects, transforming into non-animate things, changing, shape, shifting, and then feeling like you're stuck in something that's not your body. Feeling like cement or concrete is also very common on Salvia. Becoming a part of your furniture or part of the wall also lends to being flattened and all that. It's like you're being compressed into things. Though less common, vines are still a prominent archetype on Salvia. These express themselves as constricting, grabbing. They can be rope, veins, or tentacles, and they usually are an expression of constriction. Childhood themes are a real big one for Salvia, and all psychedelics really. This one isn't too specific to Salvia. Primarily, it is this feeling of being a child again, or of experiencing childhood memories. But this can also be expressed by seeing hallucinations of like basic shapes and forms that you would see on like Sesame Street. You would see like the ABCs, a lot of like old child cartoons on TV. If you were born in the 90s, you would kind of get those 90 vibes. If you were born in the 80s, you'd get the 80s vibes. It's pretty relative. A less fun category is the factory or warehouse. A lot of people on Salvia experience this, I don't know, very dystopic <laughs> capitalist realism, but like hyper-dimensionalized experience waking up and finding out that all of reality is being built in a warehouse by exploited workers, the little beings I was talking about before. Sometimes they're on conveyor belts. I don't know, if you ever worked in a factory or warehouse, you know that feeling of exploitation. There's also the machine scapes. The hallucinatory landscape is often so intricate and complex that there's all these moving parts, which can also bleed into the archetype of warehouse and reality construction. But not, also not just construction of reality, but construction of consciousness. So there's that. <laughs> This category is an archetype for all psychedelic experiences, and that's the archetype of spectacle. I feel like this is a better term or more overall encompassing term for archetypes like the circus, festivals, carnivals, theme park, amusement park, theaters, zoos, sideshows, big top circus tent, and celebration in general. Usually people just say the circus, but it can really be the parade and all sorts of these different spectacles. And what it really symbolizes is like celebration. There's a sense of cohesion there. And the thing is, is that I believe that the reason why the circus is so prominent in our consciousness is because it is designed to appeal to all the fringe aspects of human psychology that needs to be or stimulated. For example, uh, seeing animals do tricks or humans defy death. All these things create a whole sense of awe, wow, and, and spectacle. And the whole sideshow thing can be very kinky and disturbing and all sorts of human emotions are brought up in these experiences. The fact that a lot of times there's this presence of other beings in the psychedelic landscape, it can really feel like they're putting on a show for you. Like they're constructing something for you to either entertain you, to inspire awe. I could probably go on for hours on this archetypal bone. And the final category is just other because there's a few other archetypes that I just don't know where to put them. Archetypes of tessellation, patterns, and puzzles. Maybe I should just call this the textile uh, archetype. 
So those are all the archetype categories. Um, I'm also working on the meta archetype categories. This is the effort to put all those categories I just said into even smaller categories. They're very much a secondary focus for now. So I got four main meta archetype categories and that is the other. Those are like the little beings, the shepherdess, the tricksters. These are the alter egos. Entities are just presences. The second major meta archetype category is dimension and temporality. So anything that involves time or extra or less dimensions, like if you feel like you're 2D, a cartoon, or if you feel like you stepped into the fourth dimension, whole wheel archetype is a part of this. The third is what I'm calling anamnesis because it needs to be a fancy title. It can't just be childhood. <laughs> These are the archetypes involving uh, memories and childhood. So ABCs, Sesame Street, etc. The fourth is transformation. That's the shape-shifting archetypes and turning into objects, all those things. As far as I can see, these are the four uh, archetype categories for the Salvi experience. But like I said, that's a work in progress. I don't even know if it's necessary to make meta archetype categories. Now I wanna get into these very common sensory and emotional themes. These aren't archetypes, but they are very common experiences. And as you will see, a lot of these common senses and emotions really play into those archetypes in their presentation. So the first category is kinesthesia. That is the hallucination of movement. So rolling, spinning, twirling, pulling, pushing, folding, dragging, smearing, feeling stuck, flattened, crushed, condensed, or smashed. These are prominent hallucinations, but a lot of times when people talk about hallucinations, they're primarily vision-based. We shouldn't underestimate how these sensory kinesthetic hallucinations play into these archetypes and the experience. Second category is nociception, and that's the fancy term for pain. It's specific types of pain, such as pins and needles, slicing, shredding, burning, slapping, that kind of stuff. And it's no coincidence that kappa opioid receptors and some of those regions where kappa opioid receptors are very prominent also have high correlation with nociception. So then we have the emotional category, which is dysphoria, like feeling of uneasiness, dread, doom, colossal onset of that something big or important is going to happen. Those are very common that like it's like that instant regret or like just like feeling that there's no turning back. And I think these emotions of feeling nostalgic, feeling the awe and wow can actually inform the archetype rather than the other way around. Potentially. The sense of temporality is another category. So when you feel timeless or eternal, feeling like time has slowed down or sped up. The experience of co-occurring moments, such as the presence of both the past and the future occurring at once. And finally, for my last category is affected action. And this is what your literal body does on Salvia, not the perception of your body. So when people run and walk on salvia, um, rolling around, kicking, speaking glossolalia, covering your face with your hands, laughing, drooling, looking and interacting with things that are not present. So that's a short list of the things that can happen to your physical body after smoking salvia. When smoking salvia, these things are more likely to happen because it's so intense and so fast, the body can try to run and escape the experience because there's, again, there's no turning back. Whereas if you chew the salvia leaves, it comes on much gentler. So you might roll around and laugh a little bit, but you're most likely not gonna run headfirst out of the room like you would smoking salvia. So that's it, that's the list. Let's go back to the couch. Mmm, brisk. That was my attempt at listing and categorizing this salvia archetype phenomenon. If we were to do this project, there are a few things to consider when compiling the data. The more information about the reports, the better. We could use a similar system to that of Arrowhead, which includes things such as the date of the experience, dosage, age, and body weight of the user, setting, and additional drugs involved in the experience. After a report is collected and sorted, it will eventually need to be 
verified by a human to check which themes are present. We could also potentially begin to gather archetypes from other drug experiences, such as DMT and psilocybin, in order to compare and contrast the differences between them. The hope is that once sufficient reports are filtered and verified, the data can then be used to develop hypotheses and contribute to various fields of study such as psychology and sociology, etc. These archetypes are truly mysterious and they exist on a few different levels. Like there is the documented occurrence of users having these experiences in common, but then there is also the personal level of what the experience means to the individual who had it. We can choose to interpret them, use them as tools for guidance, research them, or simply observe. I personally believe that the meanings of these archetypes are relative and that there is no one true meaning behind any of them. I used to believe that these archetypes are the strongest proof there is that there exists a metaphysical plane of collective consciousness. After years of researching how salvia works in the brain, I reluctantly came to the conclusion that these are better explained as psychological and neurochemical phenomena rather than metaphysical ones. But again, there is still so much we don't know about salvia and how psychedelics work in general. That is why I think it would be neat to have a data bank to get a better picture of what is going on here. Although I have to emphasize that this is a voluntary community project for those with the time, energy, and resources. It is not in any way to generate profit or clout. My business is primarily making free YouTube content that is supported by my fans on Patreon. <laughs> and like 50 cents of ad revenue a month. I want to be a part of the psychedelic community, not represent it. I also just get overwhelmed easily. Like I can't moderate a discord, but if you would like to join, please feel free to email me. Just keep in mind that this Discord server is specifically for working on this archetype documenting project. Let me know in the comments if you want there to be like a chill discord for y'all to chat and share your experiences in. Although you could just chat in the comment section, which I do read. Let me know what you think of this list, this project, my outfit, and how your day is going. Thank you to the Salvietic Interbeings of Patreon for making these videos possible. Become one yourself by signing up at any tier. I'm on Insta and Twitter too. Links in the descripto. Thumbs up to support my channel and subscribe for content on the rag. And ring the bell to make sure you don't miss anything. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next week, trip safe.